Hey guys, today we're going to cover the Prince Eugen and this is a build I've been trying to run, uh, show off for quite some time. So as you're to run horse with the base tray of sniper dispersion, uh, good day's work here instead of brawler because you have a, you should be running sonar, we'll get more into that later. So damage to damage control reload time is better. Second skill here, torpedo launch, 100%. 12% extra torpedo range and 5 knots additional speed makes the Eugen a monster. A uh, really powerful still skill. Firefighter, and again, uh, reducing fire chance, fires to three, reducing fire chance, and further decreasing your damage control party reload time. Uh, on second thought, well, on second thought, let's moving on to that one. Uh, fire, uh, master mechanic, sorry, for additional repair parties and better heals, and then will to rebuild for even more heals and better heals over a shorter duration. <clears throat> Adigo as an inspiration. For better stealthier torpedoes and Norman Scott for additional precision of shells. Argument can be made for Makawa. Now, with this build, 9 km torpedoes that go 65 knots. <clears throat> These heels heal for a little bit more than 8k, and you've got four of them, so it's a very, 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 very nice heels. If you swap it over to a destroyer commander, as in comparison, two heels, and you're healing for a little bit under. 8k so <clears throat> it's a significant difference in 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 tankiness also you don't have ultra build um yeah so let's swap her back there uh, the, the, the prince eugen is a basically improved version of the hipper in almost every way uh you got decent same detection same maneuverability the torpedoes you get a one extra base knot which means nine kilometers for us uh guns are the same except they're a little bit more penetration angles and you have the option to switch to main battery reload booster. <clears throat> sonar though is significantly good. Amazingly sh amazing sonar, so you really don't want to switch off that. Armor scheme, a little bit more reliable than the Hepper, but it does lose out on the icebreaker. 40mm icebreaker doesn't cover the whole belt, whole nose, it just covers the, the sides of it. But other than that, it's a really good armor scheme in comparison to the Hepper because the turtle back armor scheme is actually effective. <clears throat> What's really good about the Eugen, it's not only coded in 27, the armor is pretty solid. Um, you have an issue with uh, torpedo, your engine being taken out because you're a German cruiser. But um, if we can take off all the armor here and just show the Citadel. You can see the turtle back there. That's the turtle back. Alright, come on. Let's go over here. There we go. Okay. If we find a certain spot, that's <coughs> what it's going to be, find the, the correct spot. Here we go. 40 millimeters armored deck so on the hipper it's only 30 and 30 is a very common uh, overmatchable armor scheme where the sh high caliber shells can punch right through more more commonly uh, the 40 millimeters though is a different story entirely so if you're eating damage from battleships and even other cruisers it's very likely that you will just uh, eat a penetration and not an actual citadel because it will bounce off the armored deck now without much further ado let's head into a battle and we'll see so, yeah, uh, perfect matchmaking for sure. All they have is one battleship, and that is a tier 7 Bismarck, so 15 inch guns, which will bounce harmlessly off the 20 mm plating. Uh, I have done better on ma on matchmaking with 16 and even the Yamato as well. Uh, you can do it, you just gotta play a little more carefully. Uh, you really want to uh, use island cover, be careful about it, and obviously, you don't want to take any damage. If possible, again, you still want to angle your ship. You still want to hopefully turn away from the salvos, use that turtle back, and you never know. Some shells might hit your icebreaker as well. So you've you've got you've, you definitely have options. You're not completely out the woods. You definitely need to use your concealment and use island cover whenever possible. But the thing you have over almost any other cruiser is these fast, good detection two sets of torps on each side which is pretty darn deadly nine kilometers is pretty darn scary so yeah you really want to you could really take advantage of this and you when it comes to the yolo you're one of the best ships if not the best ship to yolo anything in so yeah definitely worth it uh, as i said before i think these guns have good penetration angles on them which is a very un-german trait but it works uh we have helena here this thing is, this thing is, AP is probably your primary uh, ammunition choice. Even against destroyers, you probably just want to keep the AP on unless you're firing 
like reliably more than like two more than two salvos on the guy because the AP actually has so high alpha compared to the HE there we go prime example kid here <coughs> Uh, that the HE, the only HE's only advantage is uh, the module breaking, and besides that, the damage is very similar to the AP, if not the, actually the kind of the same. It could be slightly higher, but honestly, not not noticeable. But because you have the AP loaded, you can get shots on these broadside targets and get these hippers. There we go. Ricky's engine, typical cruiser tray, uh, German cruiser tray. Unfortunately, our engines do not like getting hit anywhere but uh, overall be pretty good so let's see we have a hipper here it's our hell now not hell we've already done the hipper in kid takes out rackets okay, that's unfortunate but uh, he's kind of exposed himself in the middle of our team on the middle flank so on the middle of the flank uh, broadside hell now let's see if we can take advantage of that Again, you could you have this really good AP. This German AP is great. You get a broadside target, and uh, German penetration angles are normally not good, but this is not bad. It's pretty pretty good for the Oigen in particular. Again, you'd actually have better results if you're running uh, a cruiser commander for the Hepper, and you can get some crazy games. I've got a lot of good games using Azure Lane Hepper, or the equivalent would be Carl von Miller. Again, the additional speed for our Hepper is nice. Right, we've got these torpedoes. Uh, they reload in 68 seconds, so really not much of a penalty to just fire them. That's my plane gone. I'm kind of hesitant to use my sonar because I've only got two charges and three destroyers are still in the mix. <clears throat> so I need to be careful with that. There is a Yudashi ahead of me as well, so definitely worth noting. So far, some torpedoes, 9km range. I might hit the kid, I might not, but <clears throat> that's more obstacles for him to dodge always helpful you know it's worth firing them and you may get a hit rather than just uh, not firing them because you know you might not get a hit there's it's definitely worth firing it and by the time I use, I'll need these torpedoes I will have them reloaded I'm very sure and if not I could always fire the other side so definitely well worth the firing of torpedoes. these torpedoes really, really quickly so very helpful broadside York fortunately uh, well, fortunately for me, I did sue our Citadel. There's a Yudashi, by the way. Let's pop the sonar now, because he is close enough to be a problem. As you can see, the AP is doing not bad. Six over pens. If I had HG loaded, maybe could have done more, but it's what I got in the barrel. Always oh, fire what you got. There's no point in wasting the time reloading. I can always switch after I fire my shells. Oof, okay. Yeah, York, uh, that's just the AP right there. Incredibly effective against other other cruisers. Just incredibly effective. You win almost any gunfight against another cruiser. Additionally, as well, you have the German quarter HE pen. So if you're struggling to do damage to something that's really well angled, you can switch the ETA and you'll get reliable damage. It won't be much though, but you will get reliable. Damage. You will get reliable damage. <clears throat> now I'm pushing forward here because my sonar is actually keeping this Yudashi spotted, and hopefully team can take advantage of that. Uh, there's a couple ships that do have line of arc. There we go. Yeah, that ship to my right does have line of arc on the guy. So I will keep him spotted by pushing in. Best Mark's pushing in too. Not a major concern because I have uh, 27 million plating everywhere plus the 40 million icebreaker. Uh, I can comfortably just uh, keep pushing in without tanking him. Meanwhile, uh, it's better for me to shoot at targets I can more reliably damage. So yeah, I'm going to chase this Yudashi down. Can I get a shot? I'm going to try it. No, not such luck. Very close. Again, I wouldn't be pushing this if I didn't have the sonar running. Because I have the sonar running, I know he's sent to me. Meanwhile, we've got a broadside transport tail. Who's completely oblivious to our presence. He's focused on other enemy, other allied ships ahead of him. And he's paid the price for that. Can we get additional shot on him? This mark secondaries, by the way, are doing damage. But I have he already used one heal and I'm using an extra heal there. Let's turn our attention towards him. Another citadel on the Martel. That's always nice. Hipper here. That's a good one there. Hipper here. <laughs> you can get him going. Use the AP again. He's giving a relative broadside. Broke his to peel tubes. At least one set on one side. He has the same layout as we do. 
Can we follow up on this guy? Again, we're by tanking the Bismarck to just try and reduce our target profile. He's firing HE. We just double Citadel, I believe, the Hipper again. In this range, this turtle back is ineffective. Again, as we discussed before, that turtle back is not great on the Hipper. <clears throat> Unless you're turning in, actually lo lowering your ship in the water more, your ship's bow in the uh, hull in the water, you can see the difference. You'll, you'll, it'll actually work. But yeah, we go. as you can see, uh, Torpedo's super effective, <clears throat> very stealthy, and very fast. Obviously, that Bismarck was not running his hydro, but even if he was, honestly speaking, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Can we get a double strike to finish off? No, we are robbed by two overpains. Unfortunate. Guess you need a little bit more head, but well, whatever. No double strike for us, but it's still a kill. Another sit of course. So we're just gonna back up here and get this cap. This game is pretty much over. There's only two destroyers left. I believe it's the kid and then something else, I'm actually not sure. <clears throat> but yeah, we just kinda pushed that flank. We kinda bullied everything there. We used three out of our four heals. We still got another heal left, and we're a little over half health. And if need be, we can always just run behind our gate, uh, go behind there, and uh, just uh, you know, run into an ally for build to rebuild. So yeah, it's an incredibly tanky build. Uh, you can really use this tankiness to your advantage. Um, I basically played the battleship for this whole side here. I just pushed. Look, even the destroyer is behind me. <coughs> And that's, uh, yeah, uh, a really, really aggressive game. And you can do these aggressive plays with a Prince Eugen, assuming you've picked the right moment. Again, you got to be aware of what's, what's there to kill you. Is there a Yamato on the other side of the corner? Is there a 16-inch gun battleship there? Is there a crap ton of torpedo boats? Is there a Shimikaze? You know, you got to be careful. And do you have the sonar on cooldown? Is it on cooldown? Is it, is it ready? Picking the right time to go for these brawls is, is really essential and picking the escape plan also quite useful. <clears throat> Again um, in a further video I'm going to cover at some point regarding trades. Prince Eugen is a prime example of knowing when to trade your ship and when not to trade your ship. So yeah without much further ado that's the game ended there. Uh, we can take a look and see how we've done. Yes congratulations I passed my milestones always doing a good game this pops up and always starts to be a little bit annoying. So 123,000, a death strike, high caliber, a nice confederate, uh, 9 citadels and yeah only 4 torpedo strikes but still definitely got to see those torpedoes in action. Over 3,149 base XP and yeah I think we did alright. So as usual hope this helps and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.